Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to I'm Not Gonna Hold You, man. We here, got our guest spot this week, man. Got the homie Trayvon Edwards, a.k.a. Black Trey. If anybody follows him on in the NBA Twitter circles, man, got the homie here. What's going on, bro? Ain't much, man. Thank you for having me. Glad to have you on, bro. It's always good to, you know, talk hoops with you and things of that nature, man. Let's uh, let's just get right into it, man. You NBA analyst, man. You've been there. You're in New York City right now. Uh, and, you know, how's the transition been from L.A. to being out there on the East Coast? Oh, man, I love New York, bro. <laughs> you know, <laughs> I ain't going to lie to you, bro. Like, coast to coast G, man. I mean, that's good, man. You know, being from the crib. I mean, I like how y'all thriving in, in, in L.A. as well. So, you know what I mean? With me growing up here, sometimes you got to kind of branch out. Yeah. And see different things. So in this chapter of my life, you know, New York is, is where I'm at for the moment. Well, yeah. yeah, man. It's always always good to get like a different view. Like, like I said, I love Chicago, you know, to, to the fullest. But I don't think, you know, unless, unless a big check gets me out of here, mm -hmm. I, I think I'm going to be out here in Cali for a minute. But I do love New York. I've, I've been yeah. to New York one time and I had a fucking blast. So I can only imagine what it's like living there. But speaking of New York, man, let's talk about New York's uh, – I would say the the good team. Of course, we all know the Knicks are the kings of the city in New York. You know, all my friends from New York will never uh, never uh, miss an opportunity to remind me of that. But everything going on with the Nets, man, of course, the Kyrie situation, Kevin Durant is hurt. And, of course, this big trade that happened last week between James Harden and Ben Simmons between the Sixers, man. What's your overall thoughts on the whole uh, thing leading up to it, how the trade eventually happened, and their press conference that, that they had yesterday? Um. I think this trade works out for all parties. You know what I mean? Like, I mean, if you listen to both press conferences, you know, respective parties said what they had to say, you know what I mean? And and it was time for change. I mean, you know, obviously the big three in, uh, in Brooklyn only played 16 games together. Um, so it never was normal. Um, and a lot of frustration happened. Um, but, you know, James ended up in – you know, Philadelphia where he wanted to be. And then Ben Simmons ended up in a new situation where he can start fresh. So um, I think both players can add value to both teams. You know, um, you know, Doc Rivers once said before, you know, before the trade deadline that he needed another guard. He got a Hall of Fame guard in James Harden, you know, and, you know, I feel Ben Simmons and um, Seth Curry and Andre Drummond bring and fill the needs that the Brooklyn Nets needed. Yeah. I mean, this trade to me is kind of like, I won't say that either side, like, I feel like it's a win-win for both. Like, you know, Philly got a guy that they needed in Harden, a guy who is going to be there and help out uh, MB, because not only has MB been healthy this year, I feel like he's the MVP right now. I, and later on in the show, I'll get into my people need to give more love to of course, Compton native DeMar DeRozan. I'll get into mm -hmm. my rant about that later, but I think MB is probably the MVP right now. Now with the Nets on this side, how much can you like? How much do you really expect to get from Ben Simmons this year? With you know probably like twenty something games left, and them being the AFC, what do you think we can really really expect from the Nets after the All Star break? I mean, there's really no ceiling to be honest. I mean, personally, I feel like by the twenty four, maybe before March first, you know they they're they're ramped up. You know, that I think the all-star break is kind of going to work in their favor. I've seen you tweet about, you know, the Bulls, yeah. you know, that they're, that they were working in their favor. But I think this helps the Nets a little bit more, whether it's practice time, whether it's, you know I mean, guys, you know, gelling a little bit better. Um, but, yeah, like, they're not asking him to come in and become this scorer because they don't need that. I mean, they right. have Kevin Durant. They have other guys that can fill, fill those type of needs. But primary ball handling, you know what I mean, when you didn't have Kyrie, you missed that. You know what I mean? As far as from a two guard perspective, you got Seth Curry, who's a shooter who can fill the void until Joe Harris comes back. So like yeah. these guys immediately come in as replacement guys and not saying that James Harden is super replaceable, but his lack of effort sometimes was questioned. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, um, I don't think it's a huge setback losing him that much because of the, tr the, the turnover rate on what was going on. Sometimes he had more turnovers than he had points. Sometimes he had more points. Um, he had good point, good games against bad teams. So I don't say that it's such a, a, a chop at the chop at, chop at the tree when you're adding uh, a primary defender, an, an all NBA defender in Ben Simmons who can yeah. take the load off Kevin Durant, who can solely focus on um, offense. And then also the difference between Kevin Durant and more so a primary ball handler. He is more effective without the ball. 
Yeah. You, should, you know what I mean? So I think those things work in favor and it gets open shots for a Seth Curry or Joe Harris or Patty Mills. Now, I, I agree with that. I think the, the Nets have like a whole different depth. I really love Seth Curry on that team. I feel like Steph, I mean, the way Steph is, I mean, it's, Get them two mixed up. Seth, <laughs> the mm-hmm. way Seth is uh like kind of went from just being okay, he's got a little three ball to being a real effective player. And that's I feel like was a big blow for Philly to lose him, but they had to to give him up. That's gonna help. But the question here is the question we've been talking about the Nets all damn year. What can we really expect from Kyrie? I mean, he's only he can only play uh he can, he can only play eight of the last 26 games, if I'm not mistaken. I think he's for now. For now, um, for now, up in now. up in the air. I'm gonna say by okay. March first, I think it'll be a li- it'll be lifted, um, okay. um, just because of the transitions of everything and how everything's going. The mask mandate has changed here in New York City, um, so it's slowly kind of regression. The only thing is, unless you know the mayor decides to side with like Broadway, Broadway extended their mandate until April, okay. um, which would not work in the, the net's favor, but. In this particular situation, I think that, you know, every five days they have to renew the okay. mandate. Oh, okay. So, right. so, so he has to, you know, I mean, each week he has to, you know, decide. And I think when Joe Biden, you know, President Biden um, decides to do the State of the Union, um, he'll have a chance to, um, you know, more so in good graces. I think across statewide, the mass mandates are going to live. And I think yeah. New York follows suits. Yeah, I would be shocked at that. I mean, in Chicago, they're not only mi- lifting the mask mandate, lifting the vaccine mandate. Uh, out here in L.A., I think the, the mask mandate gets lifted next week, but vaccine is still for right now. So I wouldn't be shocked if that was the case. And if that is the case, that opens up everything for me. If Kyrie can play, that takes the Nets from, okay, they might be the favorite now, no matter what seed they are, just because you get KD right. back and now Kyrie's able to play. And then all Ben's got to do is defend and rebound. So, um, and I did find it uh, funny, not funny, but like when you just said about the mandate, how uh, Adam Silver was on Get Up this morning, he was kind of like campaigning, like, I don't really get the New York City mandate. Like, you know, Kyrie, you know, uh, Way players can't play. I mean, can play, but home players can't. So I feel like he's been more vocal on that. So from what you're saying, I wouldn't be shocked at that either. So uh, one last thing on the Nets and the Sixers, they had the press conferences yesterday. Um, two things that stood out to me. One, James Harden was like blaming Kyrie, but not blaming Kyrie at the same mm-hmm. time. And Ben Simmons, actually, I was on the, 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 the scale of people who I didn't really 100% believe the, the mental health thing, but it sounded a little bit more sincere to me yesterday. Now, because we haven't heard Ben speaking God knows how long. What was your thoughts on both sides of each press conference? Uh, well, I'll start um, where I'm close to a little bit in the Brooklyn Nets side. Um, I'm not going to too much harp on what Ben's dealing with personally. You know what I mean? Um, and it's kind of out there if you dig deep. Um, but he was dealing with some stuff that's off the court okay. that I think anyone would probably be kind of questionable, you know, considering where their future or whatever's going on internally. Um, and then moving forward on that, you know what I mean? Him being able to get in a new situation. And like he said, he, you know, everyone should be happy about him smiling versus the complete opposite, because those things are important. And we all um, deal with certain things, you know what I mean? And, and obviously it's easy from the couch as far as to have an opinion and things. And this man has yet to address it until now. Those are some tough questions that were asked during that press conference. And he, stood tall to answer all of them with a straight face. Um, as far as James Harden's situation, um, you know, I, I don't really, you know, I, James being from back from my hometown, I'm always going to root for him, mm-hmm. whether it's, you know, you know, solely his happiness is, comes first. Um, and he feels that, you know, Philly is the organization for him. I, I didn't like the route that he took as far as, you know, maybe kind of, making Brooklyn the bad guy or like they allegedly snatched him out of the air when he was supposed to go get traded to Philly in the first place. <laughs> right, yeah. um, you know, and you know, the proof's in the pudding. I mean, I, I really hope that this works out for him so that he's not um, considered the bad guy at, in the long, in the long run. Like, you know what I mean? Like it didn't yeah. work out with you in this city. It didn't work out with you in this city and it's not working out in the city that you felt like was your dream city. Right. Um, so, you know, I, although I don't think he's chasing happiness, I think that, you know, eventually, I mean, at the end of the day, these guys are going to make tons of money and long as he's happy, that's all that matters. 
Definitely. I definitely think the pressure, the pressure's definitely on on hard, man. This is kind of put up a shut up time, man. And speaking of pressure, let's go to another team that was very hyped coming into this season. The Los Angeles Lakers. They are sitting at ninth in the Western Conference right now. Um, what really is this it's really us saying about this thing? I feel like I'm running out of things to talk about the Lakers every week, but um, they did not uh, make a move with the deadline. Uh, there's been rumors. Uh, Dave McMinimum even said that there was a little – you know, LeBron and AD weren't really happy with Rob that, you know, that there weren't even any moves made. What's your thoughts on just the first half of the season and where can they realistically go with only 20 something games left? I mean, like I said before, my stance has been the same. I, I didn't have them winning from jump. Um, I think the personnel was just kind of wonky as, you know, how they, how they decided to put this together on paper. Absolutely. They looked like they would have been able to do something, but it's so much inconsistencies with the injuries, with, you know, certain guys that, you know, won't make those certain sacrifices. You know, I think that's an even tougher job for the coach and also for the front office to put the right people. And I think that, you know, obviously the Lakers being who the Lakers are, chase the names instead of actually going to get the dogs that really can contribute. So when you look across the country and you see what Brooklyn's feeling and the needs with their trades, instead of going to go get another high profile player, not saying that Ben Simmons doesn't fit that, that mode of it, right. what it is, but they went and got a need versus, you know, trying to acquire uh, someone with legacy like Russell, Russell, Russell Westbrook. You know what I mean? Like, um, so, I mean, I don't think that it's end all be all. I think the West is very tough. I think that with the, the Lakers um, losing to the Suns, they're not feared as much. Um, and they're, they're, they're exposed as a beatable team. I think LeBron is going to continue to play exceptional basketball, but at what cost? Right. You know what I mean? Like, is he playing for his Instagram account or is he actually playing to host up hardware? You know what I mean? And like, I won't question his competitiveness, like, you know what I mean? But it turns into a me, me, me situation. Yeah. And you've been living in Los Angeles for a while. All the fans care about is winning. Is winning. <laughs> That's Damn, all they care about. No, no triple doubles, none of that stuff. The Rams matter. are the Super Bowl champions, win. and all they all I hear is about the Lakers. What's going on with the Lakers? <laughs> mm-hmm. Definitely. Um, so let's talk about a team that uh, you root for along with me, the Chicago Bulls. Man, it's been a uh, been a, a fun season for the Bulls. Man, they've even surpassed my expectations. I was like, yeah, we'll probably be like fifth seed or something. Like thirty seven wins. Uh, if they win tonight, they'll be 38, 38 win, and they'll be number one team in the Eastern Conference heading to the uh, All Star break. What's your thoughts on this whole revival going on in the Windy City? Uh, the Mars MVP campaign and just all the injuries this team has been dealing with. And despite all that, they're still top two in the East. First of all, go check out GQ Sports, DeMar DeRozan, yes. featured artist, I mean, featured athlete. Um, secondly, I'm super proud of DeMar. I've been watching DeMar since he was seven years old. So just becoming the man that he is, the leader that he is, the all-star that he is, um, more so, um, you know, a uh, cornerstone in our city, one of the leaders. Um, I'm just super proud of him. And then obviously, you know, I, I was secretly pulling for him to come to Chicago. I knew when he took the meeting, you know, with the Lakers, um, my mentor, you know, deals with him, you know what I mean? As far as on the agent side. So I was close to the situation, but I, when I seen, I heard that he was going to the Bulls, I was super excited and what he's been capable of doing. I think he's been able to do um, his entire career. I think he's just got kind of the, the, the bad end of the stick sometimes, you know what I mean? Or mostly blame, especially, you know, with, you know, Kawhi actually getting it done. Um, but I don't think that's solely on him. You know what I mean? Like, I think they put the right pieces around right. Kawhi in that situation that helped him. Um, and it's nothing but respect for DeMar DeRozan because he's a stand-up guy. He never complained. He never made it a big deal about where he was going. He, he never tried to force himself out of San, uh, San Antonio. And then even when people doubted him and considered him washed, he took a chance on signing with a, a, a franchise that hasn't really done much since the Derrick Rose era and has, you know, uh, embodied, you know what I mean? Whether taking, you know, sharing, sharing the, the, the floor with his teammates along with Zach Levine, you know what I mean? Teaching him, not even say teaching him how to win, but showing him what it takes to win, you know what I mean? Because yeah. Zach hadn't won more than three games in a row in his, in, yeah. in his professional career. He hadn't outside of the UF team, USA basketball, want anything meaningful on a professional level. So um, just stepping up and showing his leadership, whether it's going to IOs, you know, Jersey retirement, showing up where it's God building confidence and it's been contagious. And then, you know, kudos to, you know, front office going to make all those moves and, and bringing the right guys to support DeMar 
and the rest of the team. You know what I mean? And they've been showing it. You know what I mean? Although, you know, COVID hitting the team hard, whether injuries, these guys have been plug and play. And I think that's, you know, a test to the front office and, and the characters of the new Bulls. Yeah. Definitely, man. You talk about the winning attitude. He's definitely brought that. I think Caruso, too. I think both DeMar and Caruso have been, like, such an amazing, uh, you know, addition to this team. Like, even when DeMar was signed, I was like, when I first heard, I was like, okay, that, that, could, be, that could be nice. You know, I, I didn't know that he was going to play as well. Like, he's on, like, a whole nother play, man. So, I'm just really excited to see what the team's going to do in the second half when everybody gets back together, man. Uh, two more things, man, before I get you out of here, man. Uh, one, let's talk about – well, pretty, I won't say with the halfway mark. People got to stop saying it's the halfway mark. We're like 75, 75% done with this season. But we only got 20-something games left at the All-Star break. Who do you think right now is should be the title favorite? Is it Phoenix, you know, or is there some other team that you think that people should be talking about? Well, you know what I always say, man? The season don't start until after All-Star. Right. So it ain't even started yet for me. <laughs> you know what I mean? To be honest, yeah. because, I mean, guys are, you know, teams – shift, make trades, do what they need to do, injuries out of the way. The bad teams go away after All-Star. They know that they're packing it in, starting to sign guys off the street, letting them finish the year out, shutting start guys down. buyouts. Yeah. You know, and start start working towards that. And then now we start getting into the nitty-gritty of things that count because it's on so many games, it's a lot of fluff play. So um, right now, my Eastern Conference favorites are the Milwaukee Bucks. I still think that, you know, uh, you know, you got to beat them to go through them. You can't You can't just say the Brooklyn Nets got it, this, that, and the third. They still are trying to get where the Milwaukee Bucks are. Um, and then on the Western Conference side, I think Phoenix Suns are the most complete basketball team, and I think that they have a chance to make it back. Um, I'm interested to see, you know, in the conference finals, uh, Milwaukee versus Brooklyn, and then on the Western Conference side, Golden State versus Phoenix. I mean, I'm happy with whoever ends up in the finals, but those teams are – um, look like they're gearing up. Yeah, I think it's gonna be. I'm. I'm really. I like last year's playoffs, but I think this year's playoffs has a chance to be generational. Like, I think it's gonna be so damn good, and I'm looking forward to that, man. Uh, last topic, man. Pivot from the NBA. Uh, you're a Rams fan. The Rams won the Super Bowl championship. Um, the parade is out here in LA today, man. Uh, Matthew Stafford has defeated me. Uh, for anybody who knows, I'm a diehard Bears fan, and I didn't think he had it in him. <laughs> I, I did not think he had it in him. He went out there took uh took advantage of it, man. So I want to know what's your thoughts on not just the Super Bowl, but what do you think this will mean for football in LA? Because you know they're back in the city. Do you think this is going to be the the beginning of them building? a bigger fan base. Of course, we know it's a Dodger and a Laker town. Do you think that them winning a title can at least put them kind of close to those two? Um, first and foremost, I want to say that I'm a Cowboys fan first. Oh, Cowboys um, fan. Okay. So, no, this is what happened. I quit football, and okay. I know a lot of people tweet me and say, oh, I thought you was a Cowboys fan. Um, I joined after the Rams lost the Super Bowl, um, and Kaepernick got paid through his settlement. Um, I talked to my dad, I, my dad's brother. And he told me about how they were Rams fans. So okay. I started rooting for the Rams late 2019 for my dad. Okay. You know what I'm saying? So, and my, my dad died when I was young. So I just more so started rocking with the Rams. I don't even know if I'm going to ever watch football again. They won. So <laughs> like, real. Yeah. it's completed. You know what I mean? It's completed. I, you know what I mean? I don't want to make it seem like I just jumped on a team's bandwagon. They weren't good after that year. They went to the Super Bowl. Yeah, they got sure cracked. Was. And I had yeah. to sit through that. So, um, you know, with them winning, it was exciting. I had never been like a fan of a team that actually won while as an adult, so it was different. Um, but um, I don't think that they're going to be a football city. Okay, you know what I mean? Because uh, tradition-wise, for one, a lot of people are not going to just jump. I mean, you'll see they'll convert a few people, but this is a LA has been such an open city to allow you to be a fan of any team that the loyalty is too strong. So if you're thinking about uh, the Southern Cal region, it's Raiders and Niners, always. It's always going to be Raiders and Niners, and then you're going to kind of sprinkle in the new people that just kind of joined on when they won, and that's cool and dandy. But L.A. not having a team for so long allow people to be Steelers fans and Cowboys fans, yeah. and you know what I mean? And it's just – it doesn't – you're not going to get that. because It's, it's like a mosh spot. Like I've yeah. met a lot of Bears fans out here. Like I've been to Bears yeah. bars in Los Angeles. So yeah, yeah, it's 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 no territorial thing here. I mean, I think it's more of a freedom of fandom in the city. Um, but I'm glad that we actually have something to rep. And surprisingly, that's the first team I ever rooted for from Los Angeles. 
That's interesting. That's interesting, man. Yeah. Uh, but then, uh, thank you for joining me, G. Uh, let them know where they can find you, where they can get into anything you got going on. Let the people know. Yeah, you can find me uh, on Twitter at Trevon, uh, on Instagram at Trevon Edwards. On Wednesday nights, you can catch me on at the buzzer with Trey. Um, and be looking out for some other stuff that's coming out. All right, man. Definitely, man. Thank you for uh, pulling up, bro. Yep, no problem. Yes, sir. <laughs>